like I said, about 1,000 to 2,000 years following the flood. But eventually, those waters breach that earthen dam. And when water breaches the dam, it collapses catastrophically. And a massive water flow formed the canyon, probably the majority of the canyon, in between three and six days. As these waters, which scientists say would have held three times the amount of water of Lake Michigan, this would have been trapped behind the upwarp, blasted and flowed through there very quickly, dispersing the sediments. Now, most, in a matter of days. In a matter of days, and dispersing them widely, because scientists today, Dr. Baugh, still have trouble identifying where did the 908 cubic miles of missing sediments go. But there's even more proof of God's global flood judgment at Grand Canyon. On our bus tours, I show Cedar Butte and Red Butte. Now, these two buttes stand on top of the Kaibab limestone. So if you were standing at the edge of the canyon, looking down into the canyon, you'd be standing on the Kaibab limestone. But right behind you are 900 foot tall buttes. These buttes are sedimentary layers of rock that were laid down by water, the Moenkopi and Chinle formations. But other than these two buttes, those 900 foot tall layers are gone for thousands of square miles in all directions. How do you remove 900 feet of strata for thousands of square miles without showing any evidence of where the missing sediments went? But more important and impressive than that is there used to be 4,000 feet of layers on top of red and cedar buttes. There is a mile deep sedimentary layer missing from a, the top of Grand Canyon, gone for thousands of square miles. How do we know that? because you can pick up those layers in Utah in what's called the Grand Staircase. Yes. They're picked up once again where the erosion stopped. But the last time the floodwaters ran off, they eroded that mile-deep layer, dispersing the sediments to where they are nowhere to be found today. So what in the scenario, we have at the time of the flood in the drainage that huge, massive uh, removal. Yes, sir. A and we have two buttes remaining as sentinels yes. illustrating yes. that. And then the staircase uh, in, in Utah. Yes. And then about uh, a thousand or so years after the flood, then you have a secondary cutting of this huge trench yes. called the Grand Canyon itself. And the Grand Canyon is a monument to God's past and coming judgments of sin. And God's got such a great sense of humor, Dr. Baugh. If you go to the South Rim, coming out of Williams North, you have to pass within a mile of Red Butte. You drive right past it, towering above you. If you come in from the east, from Cameron, you pass right by Cedar Butte, towering above you. And so everyone that goes to the South Rim, and we're talking millions of people of each year, certainly see those buttes, but they don't give them a second thought. And of course, then they, they pick up a pamphlet at Grand Canyon, which says, millions of years ago, and if you go into the Desert View gift shop, there's a large picture window. If you stand in front of the window, framed perfectly is Cedar Butte. And so we are without excuse if we we've be been there. Without excuse. The Sentinel stands as a reminder that there was a worldwide flood. In yes. fact, let's address that for a moment. On one of my trips to the Middle East, uh, with me were three geologists, including Dr. Don Patton, who is uh, featured here. This is a layer that geologists and geophysicists have identified as the Austin Chalk, the very same layer that runs through the Glenrose Formation where I live. Mm -hmm. It was first examined and uh, written in the technical literature near Austin, Texas. It runs 1,600 miles through Glenrose to the eastern seaboard of the United States, picks up again at the White Cliffs of Dover, runs throughout Europe and Scandinavia, throughout Russia, throughout China, runs throughout Israel as featured here, runs throughout uh, Africa, back to the United States. This same layer runs north throughout the continental United States and Canada, runs south throughout Central and South America. With a little disruption at the Rocky Mountains, it runs all the way to the western seaboard, and then it picks up again in Australia. This same sedimentary layer. It's one of the tremendous monuments, global monuments, mm -hmm. to a global flood. Absolutely. And you have vividly described the activity at the time of the flood in laying down billions upon billions of living creatures in a judgment form. It's man who sinned. Mm -hmm. But all living systems were judged. Were judged. And our loving creator could have left us right there separated but forever. 
unfortunately, our Creator is a God of absolute mercy. And that God of mercy not only demonstrates to us academically, if we will listen, that there's evidence supporting the global flood, but he demonstrates to us that there was one who came and lived as God wanted man to live. There was one who came and served God as God deserves to be served. There was only one who was blightless, sinless, only one, and his name was Jesus Christ. He was God in the flesh, and he became our perfect lamb of sacrifice, went to Calvary, died for our sins, was buried, and rose again so that the living Savior could enter the heart of the sinner. At this moment, Jesus Christ is knocking at your heart's door. He declared, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will hear my voice and open the door, I will come in, I will sup with him, and he with me. Right now, would you pray this simple prayer? Just pray it from your heart. Pray it with me. Dear God, I open my heart's door. I'm a sinner. I need the blood of Jesus Christ to cover my sins and wash them pure and white. Lord Jesus, I ask you to come in right now. I ask you to save me, become my Savior, and I will live for you with all my heart. If you prayed that simple prayer, the God of the universe, who is ever attendant to the cries of those who suffer, ever attendant to those who want to know him, the God of the universe literally stepped into your heart as the living, resurrected Savior. Therefore, you're a member of the family of God. One day I'll meet you, and one day together we will meet our Savior, Jesus Christ. Creation in the 21st Century has been sponsored by Trinity Broadcasting Network. And only with your love gift of support can this program stay on the air. So write to Creation in the 21st Century, P.O. Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711. Creation in the 21st Century is a unique program on TBN combining biblical knowledge with scientific verification. Much of the information that I use on the program is available. Contact us. Just write Creation Evidence Museum, P.O. Box 309, Glen Rose, Texas, 76043, or call us at 254-897-3200. We look forward to hearing from you today. A revolution has come to broadcast television, even bigger than the change to color. On February 17, 2009, television goes all digital. But without an upgrade, some TVs will stop working. Find out.